point of global threat. Poisoning of the air and of the principal sources of food and water supply is already well advanced and at first glance would seem promising in this respect. It constitutes a threat that can be dealt with only through social organization and political power. But from present indications, it will be a generation to a generation and a half before environmental pollution will be sufficiently menacing on a global scale to offer a solution as a substitute for war. In other words, we replace the war threat with an environmental threat. Now you know why the environment is on the TVs and the media constantly. A generation to is about 30 years, so it would be about 1991 that this would be brought up to global scale. It is true that the rate of pollution could be increased selectively for this purpose. In other words, what they're going, you could, you could selectively find areas where you could deliberately increase the pollution to get this threat in motion a little quicker. It is true that the rate of pollution could be increased selectively. In fact, the mere modification of existing programs for the deterrence of pollution could speed up the process enough to make the threat credible much sooner. In other words, let's have the governments drag their feet on pollution controls or the enforcement of pollution controls. And around the world, that's exactly what we have seen, a matter of foot dragging on the areas. One would then perhaps get the concept that this was all deliberate. Allow pollution to deliberately get worse until it can be manipulated by the controlled media into a world crisis. A global crisis has to be developed. One substitute for war has then been found. The Iron Mountain agenda is being carried out. The objectives of the EcoScan? Well, the UN will end up with control over all the land, and ownership of the land will be held by the rich men. There is arising a crisis of worldwide proportions involving developed and developing countries alike, the crisis of the human environment. The process of compromise of national interests will, of course, have to take place. International economic security is inconceivable unless related not only to the world's environment, but also to the elimination of the threat to the world's environment. Well, the only major threat is private property ownership and private property rights where people can do as they want. Let us also think about setting up within the framework of the United Nations a Center for Emergency Environment environmental assistance. You can see how they're raising this thing up to an emergency status, an emergency le level. And that's what Mikhail Gorbachev said in December 8, 1989 in a speech to the United Nations. The United Nations will be the controller of all the lands in the world through their various ecological, environmental uh, organizations that they are in the process of setting up. In fact, the Rio Earth Summit was for that specific reason. Now, it's owned by the rich men. That's who owns the United Nations. That's who actually runs it. Eco Foundations of the World Wildlife Fund, Heritage Trust, Nature Conservancy, etc. Uh, there's a lot of them, and you have many UN organizations. And the rich men of the earth sit on the boards of directors on all of these groups. These groups are buying up huge chunks of private land for conservation, they say, and to preserve the earth. And of course all of it is to be owned by the rich men. And what they cannot purchase by normal means will be taken under zoning controls, DNR regulations, or other land grab means via governmental authority and regulation. All land will be under strict eco-controls because, after all, we are now involved in, in the middle of an eco-emergency. And it's nothing but a scam. It's really a debt for land swamp is another part of it. The international bankers loan and control the monies to all the countries and, through interest, have driven them into huge debt status. The debt of the United States is in the trillions. The bankers then come forward with a new plan. They will take the nation's land and then they will cancel the debt 
of that nation. It is called a debt for land swap. This land will be held by a World Conservation Bank owned, of course, by the rich men of the earth. They will then own all the land, all the resources, all the food. They become the absolute masters and all the people become the slaves. It's a perfect scam. It's a perfect system. Because the eco-threat is now global, then obviously it can only be controlled by a global authority. And guess who that is? Why, of course, it's the United Nations. Now, the eco-scam is being pushed by every organization that's involved in the environment. Uh, even Time magazine ran an article on the endangered earth. It's being put in all your children's uh, school books, all of their study books about the crowding of human life, about how we have such an ecological crisis, an environmental crisis, and unless we all do our share, why the whole world is just going to disintegrate and the entire population of man will be eliminated. Searching safe economic replacements for CFCs is a vital part of solving this serious environmental issue. Is it fair to accuse this girl? Have these women done anything wrong? Yes, says the United Nations Climate Panel. Man's use of fossil fuels is jeopardizing the future. So the United Nations Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, or IPCC for short, has put man on trial. The evidence consists of computer models showing that as this century proceeds, emissions of carbon dioxide and other greenhouse gases into the atmosphere will lead to disastrous global warming. But a number of internationally acclaimed climatologists say it is far too early to put mankind on trial. In one period we're in, not in the context of or in the perspective of past climates. Interesting diagram. One of the things about the climate change issue that uh, is a great concern to me is the fact that some of these policy decisions could uh, cost quite a lot and yet have no effect at all on the climate. In my commission, I can hardly find anyone which would subscribe to the IPCC scenario. Now, as we go approach our time, we can see that in the period between 4,000 years ago and back to the period 2,000 years ago, which is actually the Roman age, the temperatures have been decreasing in Greenland by two and a half degrees. Then the temperatures increased gradually up to a maximum point around the medieval warm period, we call it a thousand years ago, and then temperatures declined and goes down to a minimum around 1650 AD, comes back up a little in the 18th century, and then around 1875 we have the lowest point in the last 8,000 years right here and that matches exactly the time when meteorological observations started. Right, he's a complete hypocrite. He's, he's a fraud on this issue. He uses 20 times more energy than the average American at one of his three houses. This is just his Nashville house, and he has two other houses as well. And not only this, but he owns one of the most polluting zinc mines in the state of Tennessee. And he also doesn't buy carbon offsets like he says he does. He buys them from a company that he owns. Yeah. So, and we've we've chronicled on this program, for example, his uh, his private jet uses. I know he's like a limousine leer, is what we call him, uh, like a limousine liberal. But you know, one of the things about his zinc mine, which you know earned him nearly six hundred thousand dollars. More specifically, we found out that you know before these mines were shut down, sixteen point six million pounds of toxic substances were released into the air, according to the EPA's toxic release inventory uh, data. Another two point six million pounds at the site right where he was. Um, that's a lot of polluting for one person, considering the private jet use, his electrical use in just one house. 
It certainly is, and, and you think about this issue that he, you know, he says he's concerned about his grandchildren, about the future of the world, and he's obviously not concerned enough to take the steps in his own life to reduce, first of all, his energy consumption, and when uh, this zinc mine was in operation, cleaning up the zinc mine, so he's a complete fraud. He's a guy who's a snake yeah. oil salesman, who's gotten, uh, gotten people to buy into this global warming uh, hysteria.